Hello everyone, my name is Sean Levick from the Geospatial Ecology and Remote Sensing Lab. This is our environmental monitoring and modeling course. And today we're going through Lab 10, the last lab in this particular series, communicating Google Earth Engine discoveries. The objective of today is to get an overview of different ways of communicating discoveries that you make in Google Earth Engine, including the publishing of maps charts and animated time-lapse videos. I'd like to acknowledge the Google Earth Engine developers as well as the Open Geo blog. The link to that blog is here where some of this information comes from, uh, particularly the snippets of code here for adding legends to maps. So we've used the mapping feature of Earth Engine in all of our previous labs using the map add layer command. Um, one aspect that we haven't covered so far is how to add a legend to a map. In general, I tend to export my maps, my Earth Engine images and maps as a GeoTIFF, and then work with it in QGIS to produce a publication quality map. But sometimes we may want a faster way of communicating an image or a map. And for that, it's useful to be able to add a legend right within Earth Engine so that we can export just a JPEG or take a screenshot and convey that information. So I provided two snippets of code here from the OpenGeo blog. And um, the first is for uh, printing a legend for categorical data. And you can see that this is now leaning towards the heavier end of the JavaScript programming in our course, at least. But in general, we're just defining where we want the panel to be, uh, details about the legend and how we want to behave. So if we copy that, paste it into a empty um, Google Earth Engine script, paste and run it, you'll see that we've effectively printed a legend to the bottom left corner um, and we've defined a palette with some variable names. And if we wanted to modify that, we could do that by adjusting the title here, for example, new title and we could specify what this really means. Habitat type 1, for example. If we run that, you'll see that that's immediately updated. So that's quite a useful tool, and you can move this position around by using um, you know, bottom left or top left, for example, would move that. Okay, you can clear that. Um, the script will remain here, always lab 10, if you need to use it. Um, but another interesting example is very often we're dealing with continuous data and we want to provide a gradient um, legend. Let's copy this. This example uses the chirps rainfall data that we've also used in our tutorials. If we hit run here, it's going to bring up uh, rainfall across the world. Let's zoom in to our part of the world. And you'll see we're adding the rainfall map um, to, our, to our, our base map. And here we have the gradient spanning um, a different color range. And if you come to this part of the script, these colors here define the, the range of colors here. So we can adjust uh, many aspects of this. So that's a very, very nice little approach for printing legends with either continuous or categorical data. Okay, let's clear that. The uh, last thing I wanted to show you, ah, before I move on to that, we've also done a fair bit of charting during the course, but we've of course only touched on 
what we can really do with JavaScript. And I've placed here a whole lot of links to the Google Earth Engine Developer Guide, which gives an overview of the charting function, time series charts, histograms, image region charts, a whole lot of different charting options um, with nice examples of each. So if you want to get more into um, producing figures and graphs within Earth Engine, this is a very good resource. But um, one aspect that very, very much excites me is the time-lapse animations. You might be <coughs> familiar with these already from the Google Earth time-lapse website, um, you know, showing deforestation in Brazil or urban expansion, for example. But um, we can create these um, using any image collection in Google Earth Engine. And I've provided an example over here where we call up a scene from Landsat 8. Um, it is easiest to use a consistent scene. So by specifying the path and row, we can then filter out um, scenes, with, scenes with clouds over a given time period. Um, we can display any band combination we like. Um, but importantly, if we're exporting to video, it needs to be in 8-bit data. So we have to convert that using this function over here. Um, and the actual command export the video is this, export video to drive. We give a name for the video, specify the dimensions and the frames per second. So the way I've set this up, you just need to copy this to the clipboard, paste it in here, hit run, and it'll come up with an error saying that ROI is not defined. That's because I wanted to find it in the next step. So first I want to show you where this um, image is. So this path and row relates to the section over Jabiru. Uh, Kakadu National Park and I'm using a 753 band ratio here um, if you need to refer to the Landsat 8 documentation you can pull that up here um, band 7 shortwave infrared band 5 near infrared band 3 is green okay um, if we wanted to move this, so um, we, we're querying what we've brought up here is every single Landsat image over this area, and we've taken the median reflectance value on a per pixel basis, but we've excluded clouds with more than 10% cloud cover. Um, if you're interested in a slightly different area, you'd need to look up the path and row. If you wanted to just move to one side or the other, you could adjust, adjust this. So if we went to path 104 instead and hit run, take a little while to come up, but we'll see that we move over slightly to the, to the east. Um, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to come back to my original scene. Um, don't don't worry about this error for now. Uh, I find it's best to find where the scene is. Then you can zoom in and once you found an area you're interested in and you're sure that it's covered within this single tile, you can then use the geometry tool to draw an ROI remember to rename this ROI and then hit run again now the difference now is that because you've defined the ROI the video we make is clipped to that and you'll see that this tasks tab lights up in orange and when you click that you'll see the various tasks that you're running 
And if we click Run now, we have the option to give a new name to our task. We can choose the dimensions of the video. We can adjust the frame rate if we want to. And we can save it to a particular folder in our Google Drive. And then you just hit Run. And I'll just show you an example. This is um, um, an animation I made earlier today using this approach. You can then open it up in your Google Drive. I suggest clicking on settings, turning the playback speed to 0 0.25 and um, go full screen. And just remember that what we're looking at here is every Landsat 8 image over this area uh, going back to 2013 excluding images with too much cloud cover, we still have some clouds. We can play forward <coughs> through time now. We see the South Alligator River, the floodplains, and lots of burn scars in this landscape. So this is a very nice tool for communicating how dynamic landscapes are, particularly in these tropical regions of the world. So that brings us to the end of this exercise. I'd like you to try to modify this code and create a time-lapse video export of mangrove dynamics along the coast of the Gulf of Carpentaria. Thanks for your time. I hope you found that useful. That brings us to the end of the, our environmental monitoring and modeling course. I hope you found it useful and that you're able to apply what you've learned here for environmental and ecological investigations wherever you might be. Thank you and goodbye. I'm Sean Levick from the Geospatial Ecology and Remote Sensing Lab.